What's up guys, Chris from Softlead here. Joining with me today, I have the one and only metabolic magician, not nutritionist, registered dietitian, vegetable evangelist, and the killer of keto, Brooke West. Here to talk to you today about one major mistake I guarantee you guys all have made before and or continually making at this moment, but that is breathing and bracing. If for no other reason why this is important to you, here's a big one. Your spine, right? Your core, and when we talk about core, to frame this discussion, what I'm referring to is everything from right here to right here. Not just the abs that we like to show off every now and again, but the core encompasses all this. A lot of fancy names with muscles and all that stuff. You don't need to know that. Just know when we're talking about creating pressure, we want to create pressure right here. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of ways that you can do that. The first way, you guys have to learn how to activate your diaphragms. If you notice, Brooke has her hands right here on her side. If you find your pelvic bone, come just up above your pelvic bone and take a deep breath trying to push out against your belly, you should feel your hands begin to move away from you laterally. That means your diaphragm is activating. It actually moves down as you guys take a good breath inside, fills your lungs full of air, and again, creates pressure in that thoracic cavity. That's the first step. In a lot of your guys' gym bags, you probably have these, weight belts. They're really good tools to use, especially if you're lifting heavy. Here at Softly, we like to advocate for the use of weight belts in and around, we'll call it the 75, 80% and above range. Anything below that, we'd like to see you guys really use this technique because again, the use of weight belts is great, but remember, you're also really compressing everything that's inside. It's an uncomfortable thing to wear, very useful when you're lifting heavy, not really good for you when you're lifting light. We wanna see you guys build that good technique. So, to use a weight belt, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get it up nice and high, right where that diaphragm and that belly really start to expand out, because what you're gonna end up doing, you take that deep breath and you cinch it down nice and tight. And what it does is it creates an artificial layer of protection for your core. From there, once you guys got that thing nice and loosened up, go back to that diaphragmic breathing technique. A very common cue that you'll hear in powerlifting or Olympic lifting videos is brace against the belt or push out against the belt. And what you're trying to do is you're literally trying to make that diaphragm and belly push out as much as possible, creating as much pressure in that thoracic cavity. Again, really good for protecting the low back, really good for protecting the spine. Use it on your heavy lifts. After that, say you do have a lighter lift that you wanna use your bracing technique for, which we, again, advocate that you do, and you're not gonna use a weight belt, where Brooke's gonna show you how to reactivate your core every single time you move. So, I'll take that and trade you for your barbell. What we wanna make sure you guys take with you is that when the weight is moving, you're not breathing, right? We wanna maintain our brace and our core as the weight is moving. So what this does not look like is you guys taking a big breath on the inhale, like say for example in a back squat, and when you come up, you slowly start to blow that air out. What we wanna see is we wanna see a tight and engaged core the entire time the weight is moving. So if you notice, Brooke activates her core, she comes up, and then she takes her breath once the weight is unmoving and the weight is being supported by her frame, right? Another aspect and why this is critical, especially when weight moves, is that the purpose of the core, or a purpose of the core, is the redistribution of kinetic energy. You need that tight chain in order to transfer momentum from your lower body to your upper body. So whether that means getting out of the bottom of a squat or a clean and jerk, the core needs to be tight in order to push that weight all the way overhead. Again, guys, we advocate for this technique because one, not only will it make your weight safer, but it will also allow you to put bigger numbers up on the leaderboard, which is something I know all of you want. For more information, check us out at softleet.com. Follow us on Instagram at, at softleethq. Check us out on YouTube at softleet. Again, we'll hit you guys with more information later.